Hi, Casey. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm so good. I know this is like so unprofessional, but they always say like, don't be your heroes because they disappoint you. So I, I mean, I'm twice your age probably, but you're still like one of my favorite artists in the whole world. And I'm so excited to be talking to you today. You, oh, I love that so much. Well, likewise, I appreciate your support and uh, getting the chance to chat. Yeah, this is uh, so great. The new album, Starcrossed, is like mind blown. It's just so, so good. And I know you're probably sick of talking about it, but for those people that don't know, like the inspiration on it and and how it came to be, I think is so fascinating. And it's it's called plant therapy. And, and some people may not even understand what that is, but can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, that, you know, the part of the journey um, that you're speaking about was only one one part of what inspired this entire um, chapter, this album. Um, I went through a divorce, a really personal change, um, and through a lot of, you know, self-reflection and self-exploration and also plant therapy, which is the use of psychedelics um, for therapeutic purposes, um, I, you know, kind of... I, I opened myself up and this album is what came out. It really, you can feel it too. And uh, I don't know if, if you were uncomfortable talking about how you utilize that for, for um, some help in this whole thing where you worried about being labeled like I'm, oh, she's the psychedelic girl. She's using shrooms and stuff. Were you worried about that? I, I think it's definitely something that people like to sensationalize, you know, um, I find it interesting that no one really has a problem uh, taking a prescription or, you know, a prescription and popping a pill in their mouth. But, you know, this is something that came from the ground and came from the earth. And it's been used by, you know, hundreds of indigenous cultures, like since the dawn of time, you know, uh, for spirituality and religion and um, I think that it's definitely something that you have to do with respect and reverence. Um, it's not something that, you know, you can really like, you should really take lightly. Um, I, I did uh, the guided trip at the beginning of the year with a lot of intent um, and a lot of, you know, a, a lot of a, like a want to transform the pain that I was feeling into something beautiful, something useful. Um, and for me, it was really enlightening and really helpful there are so many songs on this album that were just so relatable and it just makes you feel like wow i've i've experienced that too casey i felt that too casey and one of the <laughs> one of the songs that seriously blew me away i couldn't believe it was when you sang gracias a la vida like mm -hmm. that was in Sane. So good. Tell me a little bit about that. And I felt a personal collection being that my name's Mercedes. And I, I know, I know, you know, like you got to know the, the first one, right? Yeah. Obviously, Violeta. Mercedes Sosa. Yeah. Well, actually, it was so the song was written by Violeta Parra. And um, she was a Chilean activist, singer, songwriter, wrote the song in the 60s. And um, really, really sadly, she um, committed suicide. Um, and this Gracias Salvido was like one of the last songs that she ever wrote. It was on, you know, her last album that she put out to the world. And I mean, what an amazing, when you look at what the lyrics mean, I mean, this is the song that I heard in, um, in my guided trip. And when I heard it, it just absolutely pierced me. And I've been interested in learning Spanish for several years. I mean, I grew up in Texas. It was always around. And I just think that the language is really beautiful. Um, I'm still working on my pronunciation, my accent, but I hope that I did the song justice. Um, the version that I heard in the trip was was by Mercedes, who, which that's my favorite version. Um, so she, um, an Argentinian artist, covered covered the song to pay tribute to Violetta, and um, I'm I'm really grateful that I that song found me, and now I'm I'm able, you know, even though it's not necessarily from my personal lineage, it's a song that I really really respect, and so like I'm I'm really thankful for the chance to be able to show it to a lot of other people that wouldn't have known it. Now, how did you learn Spanish so quickly? Like, did, <laughs> did you have someone teaching you? Because you did yeah. do it justice. It sounded beautiful. It's funny, even when I'm such a perfectionist, when I listen back to it, I still hear a couple places where like, I, I said me instead of me. And I'm like, no, I just wish I could like redo that. 
um, because I do really care to do, to do it right. I had a, a tutor helping me and I've actually been taking Spanish lessons for like the last few years. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm glad, I'm glad that you liked it. It's a, it's, I thought it would be a perfect bookend to the album. You know, it says, thank you to life. You have given me so much. You have given me the beauty and the pain of being alive and being a human experiencing existence. And, you know, it's all the things big and small. It's all the things beautiful and terrible. And for, I'm thankful for all of it. And it, all of those things make up the song that we all collectively sing. And we all, it's, it's all of our same song. And I'm that's, like, yeah, that was the line I was thinking of in your song as well, which is the same song. And that's why I think so many people like could relate to that. If you know Spanish yeah. and you're like, oh, whoa, mind blown. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting and inspiring actually, because um, I think that the Spanish language just goes so much deeper than English. And so I'd love to write a song or two in Spanish one day, because I just think that you have access to many more emotions and more, it's more poetic, you know, the languages. And, and so uh, it's been really cool, especially to see, you know, fans um, like Latin fans come out and say, hey, like this was my grandma's favorite song or like my mom played this song growing up all the, all the time in the house. And like I never dreamed I would hear it on your record. And it's, it's been really fun. Yeah, I think it means a lot to, to members of the Latin community. I know I was really just blown away by that. And it's, uh, you put, I think we should put it out in the universe. You said you want to maybe record a Spanish song with maybe who is there a latin artist that you look at and like that would be kind of cool well you know i can't help but love vicente fernandez oh <laughs> I mean, icon he's like, george, he's like george the george Strait of you know that culture and i just like oh well i'm such a fan like i love like mariachi music and um you know i'm like i could totally nerd out on all that i love rosalia too like i would love to do something with her um yeah i'm a fan Okay, so here's my request. If you're ever looking to re-record another song, Los Laureles is a beautiful song. It's an old song. It's so beautiful. And I could totally hear your sweet voice belting out those notes. So you got to look that one up. <laughs> okay, I, I will definitely look that up. Yeah, and I mean, man, if only Selena were alive today, like she would be my ultimate. I grew up being such a fan of hers. And I really loved the fact that she took the initiative to learn Spanish. And then, you know, she blended this beautiful, like, it was, it was like modern music meeting, like a traditional mariachi. And like, I just think it's so cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Well, keep it up. That's great. The new album is fantastic. Star Cross. Before I let you go, I know I have only a couple more seconds here, but I wanted to ask you two questions. First of all, if you were not singing, what do you think you would be doing? What would your job be right now? Oh, that's a good question. Who honestly, who knows? I think I would do something in the creative field. Um, I, but I also really love horses. And so like, I think I'd be really happy doing something with horses. Um, but you know, it's a really good question. And that's something I think during the pandemic has forced me to think about, you know, everything stopped, the hamster wheel stopped, the touring stopped. And it's like, you know, who are you without the things that you do? So, you know, trying to figure out who you are without, you know, what you're used to doing. It's really interesting. I've taken up pottery recently. Maybe I'd be a potter. I don't know. Oh, very cool. I, I love that you're kind of a, what's the, the term for a female jack of all trades? I mean, you kind of just try it all. I don't know. I'm just dabbling. I'm a dabbler. <laughs> a dabbler. All right. And then last question, and I guarantee you've never been asked this question ever before, but it's always something I've wondered about female performers on stage. And when you guys wear those outfits that look so like, like you're wearing these fishnet pantyhose over pantyhose, what is that? all about what's that trick because I can see the fishnets and I see like your legs look perfect is that a is that a beauty trick or something it's a it's a trick I uh I think I saw maybe JLo or Beyonce do that I think that's that trick's been around for a long time I think it's ultimately like when they do that it's like a blur tool you know you you put um you put the shiny hose under on there first right and it, and it kind of blurs everything out and smooths everything out kind of contours everything and then you put the fishnets on top of that and it kind of adds even like more contour i don't know it's pretty smart though oh it's i want to try that can i do that like in everyday life that looks so perfect i mean go for it <laughs> but like post pandemic i'm like if, if i even have like a real pair of jeans on i'm like what the hell who am i trying to impress what am i doing <laughs> Well, a pandemic life served you well. You look absolutely beautiful. And speaking to you was a true pleasure. 
Gracias a la vida. This was amazing. And you oh. lived up to the hype, my friend. Hey. You're, so, you're so wonderful. Thank you so much, Casey. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you guys soon. Thank Can't you. wait. Come to Vegas. I know we're not on the tour, but you gotta, you gotta come to Vegas. I will. I will at some point for sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye.